Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Hitman. If you enjoy this video, please open up a tattoo parlor, but instead of giving people what they ask for, simply tattoo the Modest Pelican logo on them instead, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Today's mission takes us to a state-of-the-art medical treatment facility in Hokkaido, Japan. Our two targets are Yuki Yamazaki, who is a lawyer for the Yakuza Crime Syndicate, and Eric Sodas, who looks like he smokes 45 cigarettes a day, and has probably killed his fair share of escorts. We will be going deep undercover, pretending to be one of the patients, so are not able to bring any weapons or gadgets with us. We begin in our room. Our fake medical procedure to enlarge our Johnson isn't scheduled for days, so we are under no time pressure. I head out onto the balcony of our room. What a spectacular view. I know we are here to do some pretty dirty work, but all these kids these days on their mobile phones and electronic devices never look up and actually take take in the world anymore. It's time to check this place out though, and as I am a registered patient, I will use this freedom to scope out any opportunities that we can take advantage of. I head up towards the main foyer, and two Japanese staff members bow for me. What a beautiful Japanese tradition. In Australia, we have a similar tradition where if someone looks at you for too long in a bar, you walk up to them and ask them if they want to fight you in the car park. Little cultural differences like that are so fascinating. This facility has a few points of interest, such as the various sushi restaurants. I also found this really cool easter egg where if you zoom in on this woman's mobile phone, she is actually following the Modest Pelican Instagram page linked in the description of this video. I head outside to the garden area, but fail to find anything meaningful that might help us eliminate these targets. Patients also don't have access to much of the building, and so we will need to find a better disguise so we can further explore. I remember seeing some relatively isolated guards near a cable car from my room's balcony and so I head over towards them. They chat for a long time and don't seem to have any plans to separate, but fortunately I am able to break a lead pipe off the wall, which is my first real weapon. I decide not to overthink it and throw the pipe at the first guard, knocking him out, and then throw the other guy over the balcony before he realises what's happened. This was a bit of a gamble, but it seems like no one has noticed. Some would call this luck, but others would call it assassin intuition. But no, for real, it was luck. I should have checked for security cameras and stuff. I take his outfit and head back into the belly of the beast. I walk past the two employees again, but this time they don't bow for me. I mean, I've got pretty thick skin, but I will be real with you guys, this hurt. Anyway, my hurt feelings aside, let's at least find a lead on one of these targets, so we can get paid and buy some Apex Legends coins, a Big Mac, and renew poor old lonely Agent 47's P-Hub premium subscription. This new disguise works wonders, and I am able to move past security with no problem at all. I make my way down to the lower level, but on my way, my pelican senses start tingling, and I see what I really need, a fire axe. I'm such a sucker for these over-the-top weapons. They're not really useful in any way, but if you can't enjoy being an assassin, then why be one? I pop out at a garage and see this joker shivering in the cold. A pretty dumb outfit choice for the Japanese snowy mountains there, champ, but I must say, his bald head and pale white skin is definitely a fresh look. He takes a phone call, and I discover that he is a yoga teacher who is meant to be having a private lesson with none other than our target, Yuki Yamazaki, but he has pulled a muscle in his leg and can't teach. Obviously given as this guy is the splitting image of me, and is about to potentially be isolated with Yuki, I am going to fire axe him in the head and take his disguise as soon as possible. He hobbles his way into the laundry, but there are two staff members working. Eventually one leaves, and I make a move choking him out, which is a pretty risky play. She notices, but I give her a cheeky right jab. Sorry hun, but I've seen all of the Rocky movies, so I'm kind of a hectic fighter now. I quickly change into the yoga instructor's outfit and hide the bodies. Just in time too, because old mate wanders back in shortly afterwards. I realise that I have completely forgotten to use the fire axe, which is an absolute shame. But I mean, this guy in the laundry room is looking awfully suspicious, maybe it would be safer if I fire axed him just to be cautious. Let's just hope that, um, no one needs to access the laundry anytime soon. I start looking for Yuki, and then eventually find her hassling one of the chefs for some fugu fish sushi. But he says he can't serve her the fish, as it keeps 
keeps killing people who eat it. I'm no chef, but that seems like a very sensible decision. I talk to Yuki and let her know that I'm ready to do some yoga and she's just like, yeah, no worries, you lead the way. So a small problem here is that I have no clue at all where we're meant to be doing yoga. We go on quite a walk as I try to find a suitable place. Luckily, Yuki doesn't seem too bothered by the fact that I have truly no idea where I'm going. Eventually, I find the hot springs, which seems promising. This time, the workers bow for me, which means I now like Japan again. We make our way through the spa and finally find a spot where I can start teaching her some downward dog, tree, warrior, bridge, bloody reverse cowgirl, look, whatever, I'm not that familiar with yoga. This is honestly too good though. I mean, look at Agent 47, what a guy. He'll break your neck if he has to, he'll snipe you from 2000 meters, and he will even harness his mind, body, and soul whilst he truly embraces the essence of mindfulness through yoga. Anyway, the opportunity arises to push Yuki off the edge. I figure maybe no one will notice, and so I proceed to push her off. I couldn't have been more wrong. Basically, everyone notices. I take down her personal bodyguard and grab his gun. Moments later, I find myself in a massive shootout and it's safe to say I've blown this mission. Time to take the easy way out and load a checkpoint. Back to the yoga session, but this time, rather than actually teaching her, I just pretend I'm one of these Tao people in the pool. Eventually, Yuki gets annoyed and storms off shouting that she's going to leave me a bad review on Yelp. I mean, that's really harsh of her. I will have to buy the real yoga teacher an apology beer when he wakes up from being unconscious. Or did I kill him? I can't actually remember, but either way, I feel awful as negative reviews will really hurt his small yoga business. I make my way back inside, but then remember Yuki wanted that deadly fugu fish, so let's explore that avenue. I find the staff quarters and overhear a conversation about the deadly fugu fish incidents and apparently there is still one left in the freezer room. I steal this guy's disguise while he is taking a shower. He is completely distracted with his music playing, but better to be safe than sorry. Unfortunately, this disguise does not grant me access to the kitchen, but I am able to sneak around the chefs and into the freezer. There it is, the elusive fugu fish. I grab a knife from the kitchen and take a portion of the fish. To serve it to Yuki, I will need one of the chef's outfits or it will be too suspicious. I do the only logical thing and throw the kitchen knife at the chef and then choke out the other chef and of course, hide the bodies and take one of the outfits. I head upstairs and start serving sushi to the various guests. Fortunately, Agent 47 looks exactly like a Japanese guy, so nobody is concerned. Eventually, Yuki arrives, and so I prepare her some special fugu fish sushi, which she is extremely happy about. I slip away, as I don't want to be too close in case this ends up working, and after a short while, sure enough, she keels over. Yuki Yamazaki eliminated, see ya later nerd. It's time to find Eric Sodas, who is set to have a medical procedure some time today. I put back on my staff outfit and head towards the hot springs. This lady in the towel is trying to do some yoga. As someone who has just spent 20 minutes pretending to be a yoga instructor in a video game, I must say as a former professional, her form is terrible. I head outside. There's an entire wing of the hospital we haven't seen yet and that is where Eric Sodas is more than likely waiting for his operation to commence. Other than his operation, I don't really have any intel on Eric, so we'll just have to see what happens. There's a bunch of guards, a doctor, and a helicopter pilot all gathered outside the surgery wing. I climb down the building in an attempt to sneak in, but a security camera catches me and the guards are instantly alerted. What happens next will shock you. They politely ask me to leave the area as I don't have authorization to be here and apologize for the inconvenience. What a bunch of emotionless brutes. I head down the staircase near the helipad as I mean there's literally nowhere else to go. I will need a disguise to enter the surgery wing through the front doors or an alternative way in. I find a random random little security room with a guard sleeping and do the brave thing and throw a lead pipe at his head and then take his outfit and hide the body. I try and walk past the guards again, but they're like, yeah, nah, sorry matey, but you're not allowed in here. I head back down the stairs and see the helicopter pilot is isolated. So I decide what the hell, let's try his outfit and I give him the old karate chop to the neck business. Call me a lazy assassin, but I can't be bothered hiding the body properly. So I just throw him over the air. 
edge. We are taking down some big time criminals here and so there is always going to be some collateral damage, necessary or otherwise. I ditch my weapons and head back towards the guards. They frisk me but only find one weapon in my pants. Yes, I just made that joke, it's called highbrow comedy. Finally, I manage to get into the facility. I walk up to the next door, but no, these guys tell me I can't enter that part of the hospital. This is kind of getting out of hand. As I leave the building, the head doctor asks me if I have seen his pills. Like I'm not even joking, he just says to me, hey, where's my stash of pills? And I'm just like, okay, yeah, I know where they are. Follow me, doctor. I mean, sometimes you've just got to go with it and improvise. Like maybe this pilot is also a dealer? I honestly have no idea, but it really worked out well for me, and so I guess the moral of the story is, you can always count on someone who is addicted to pills to help you out. I take his outfit, hide the body, and manage to walk past the security without being frisked. I'm a VIP now, lads and lasses. I enter the first room and see my target Eric Soders who is in the middle of his operation. There happens to be an off switch for his respirator, so naturally I turn it off. His vitals start to drop, but it seems like that was a little bit too easy, and then sure enough, there's a backup defibrillator which kicks in and ensures he doesn't die. We'll have to find another way. I enter the main canopy of the surgery room. I literally just made up that they call this section of the surgery room the canopy, but it kind of sounds right, doesn't it? I enter the final section, and it is literally the controls for the big robot arms. It's just like when I used to play the Operation board game as a kid. I mean, I was never that great at it, which is probably a good thing in this situation, as I am trying to ensure this banged up fella doesn't wake up. I use the controls to give him an operation he won't soon forget. Well, I mean, he will soon forget because, you know, he won't have a memory when he's deceased, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, Eric Soders is eliminated, and I definitely need to work on my little catchphrases after I take down targets. With all the confusion going on, I am able to slip out of the building easily and escape via the helicopter. Mission complete. Zero out of five stars, what the hell? We've actually got worse since our last mission when we got one out of five stars. Look, I guess I'm just not one of those hitmen that is in and out silently without a trace. I suppose I am more of a serial killer than a hitman, but at least I got the job done. Anyway, thanks for watching, you absolute legends, and a huge thanks to my patrons who are really helping me run this channel. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.